Actually, Are you I'm not really going to tell a joke? No. Yes. You want a joke? <laughs> <laughs> I will tell a joke. Part of this is a is a I'm comedy. just waiting for a joke. I'm wondering where it is. <laughs> you are. I didn't get any jokes for you, Wild Bill. You're unhappy. I'll tell you what. Just so that you know we have jokes. Why not? Come on up here and make uh, Wild Bill laugh. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm not going up there. What do I want to go up there for? <laughs> why not? Is That's you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Why not? Woo! Why not? Ooh, here we are. Now we're in trouble. Oh, Lord. See if this works, because I'm celebrating. Celebrate! Yay! Oh, you're rising? Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! All right. Today is a really big day for me. As of today, I've been sober for a hundred days. Yay! Well, not like not like in a row or anything. Just total seven. <laughs> <laughs> You know, life's made up of mostly ordinary moments, and uh, interspersed in your life, each of us has some memorable moments, things we were proud of, things that scared the shit out of us, landmarks like, you know, marriage or whatever, <laughs> divorce maybe, and then the funny moments, and you remember that show, Kids Say the Damnedest Thing? Oh, that was Darndest, I think. Yep. Well, kids also do the darndest things. I... I remember as a kid, my, my brother Kenny was about 10. I was about eight and a half and came running in the house, and he says, uh, Oh, God, I got to get this. And he grabbed the knife out of the spaghetti. Mom used this big knife. I rinsed it <laughs> off and started out the door. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? He goes, I'll be back in a minute. Well, I didn't say hell because I was only eight. But he came running back in a while later, stuck the knife back in the spaghetti. I said, well, what were you doing with Mom's knife? And he said, well, I wanted to see... What a grand lady, daddy long legs, if they could walk without their legs. And I said, well, what'd you do? He said, I walked, cut off all the legs. And I said, well, what did it do? And he said, nothing. And well, he <laughs> said, that night at dinner, I had a big black leg in my spaghetti. I was so pissed off because I'm scared to death of spiders. Oh the worst God. thing he ever did, came running in one day, and he had just gotten a 10-speed bike. His whole elbow was ripped open. He would have blood pouring out of his fingers. And he's rinsing it off, and I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, well, I skidded on my bike, but I got a chunk of meat out of my elbow. And yeah. after he rinsed his arm off, he pulled out a frying pan. I said, what are you doing? He said, I want to see how humans taste. And he got out water, oh. and he, he fried up that hunk oh of meat that came out of his elbow and ate it. And I said, well, God, how was that? And he said, you know what? I taste pretty good. Now, <laughs> if I'm ever flying over the... If I'm ever flying over the Andes, I'm taking my brother with me. Okay. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Believe it or not, he turned out to be a really successful lawyer. Speaking of which, I hope someone's video on this so I can, I can send this to him. How many lawyers does it take to plaster a wall? Well, depends on how hard you throw them. <laughs> Did you hear about the? <laughs> Did you hear about the dead lawyer who was too big to fit in a coffin? They gave him an enema and buried him in a shoebox. <laughs> uh, hey, I hope you're filming this so I can send it to my brother. And then there was this pompous lawyer who was cruising in his Mercedes. He spotted a, this tramp on the side of the road eating grass. So he pulls over and he goes, hop in, I'll take you home with me to eat. The tramp goes, oh, gosh, I got a wife and five kids, too. And the lawyer says, well, good, we'll pick them up on the way. And the tramp's like, wow, that's so generous of you. The lawyer goes, well, it's nothing. My yard hasn't been mowing in over a month. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, I love tramp and hobo jokes. Did you hear the one about that filthy, toothless, disheveled hobo? Who saw this beautiful young woman at the edge of a precipice about to leap to her death. He yelled at her, Wait, if you're going to kill yourself anyway, won't you have sex with me before you jump? The woman looked at her in horror, and she said, Hell no, you disgusting pig, get away from me. And she leaped over the edge, and he yelled out, That's okay, I'll get you at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> 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 
That was the last word you hear. Oh, God. <laughs> nah, there are make my day moments or make somebody else's day moments. And a lot of those moments are attributed to not following the social grace rule number one, which is to think before you speak. Uh, and locally, uh, I mean, uh, nationally, I saw one about a news anchor in Michigan who, after the news uh, weatherman predicted snow and there wasn't any, she, the next night, says, uh, so, Bob, where's the eight inches you promised me last night? Not only did you leave the set, the whole crew left the set. They were laughing so hard. <laughs> now, that's really funny oh, for us. <laughs> But um, it's not funny for the lady who had to drag her ass to work all those days after that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um. Now, personally, I have uh, made a few of those. One was early in my teaching career. I was doing parts of speech. I had sentences on the board. It was down to the last couple minutes of class. I had this cute little boy, Peter Griffin. He was a daydreamer, always a daydreamer. And all the class was all involved except for Peter. And I'm like, all right, we only got a minute left here. Let Peter answer the question. Peter, who or what is doing the verb? And the class yelled out the answer. And by the third time that I was doing the subject or verb, and the class yelled out and the bell was ringing, I go, we certainly have a lot of Peters in this class, and the whole <laughs> class. <laughs> oh, I didn't know what the hell they were laughing at, and then I went, "Oh my God!" <laughs> and recently, I made somebody else's day. I went to CVS drugstore drive-through to pick up a prescription for my husband. He neglected to tell me what it was, but said he just had one, so it wouldn't matter. Well, at the drive-through, the pharmacist said, "Uh." Is this for sertraline? I said, hell, I don't know. He just has one here, and all I know is it's a little blue pill. We call it his nut pill. Is that what people <laughs> okay. take from going bonkers? And I could hear everybody laughing through the whole pharmacy. And when she handed me the pill, she goes, boy, you made our day. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's sometimes we remember because we laughed until we cried. Sometimes it really inane or ridiculous shit. One day at the little store where I fill in, my boss's son was there. He was probably about 10 at the time. She was a single mom, and um, he was getting belligerent, wayward, shoplifting, sassing back. So one of her male customers was um, trying to help her out and started lecturing the kid. And Kenton's standing there, and the guy's towering over this poor kid with his finger pointing at his face, shaking it the entire lecture, which had to go on five minutes. And Kenton was like totally wrapped in it, totally like soaking in every word it seemed. And when the customer finished, he goes, now, what do you think about that? And Kent looked at him and he goes, I think you got a big booger hanging out your nose. He <laughs> 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 hadn't heard a damn word that guy said. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but I've had at least one blind moment in my life and it was uh, driving through town I'm living in a really dinky town, and I saw blue lights, and I'm like, damn, I'm not going over 35. I know it's not speeding, so I thought, well, I'll move over. Cop comes up, and he goes, Mammy, I see your license and registration. I said, sure. So I have this little envelope I keep in my um, glove compartment. I pull out my license out of my wallet in that little folder, and I pull out the registration. He goes, uh, ma'am, this is from last year, and it's still got the sticker on it. I go, well, don't worry, I got more. And I pull out another one. He goes, ma'am, this is from two years ago, and it still has the sticker on it. And I said, well, I got more. He goes, ma'am, do you know you're supposed to put these stickers on your license plate? I said, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> he put it on for me. But, I mean, uh, I knew you were. I just forgot. Oh. <laughs> that reminds me. Moment. <laughs> nah. <laughs> That reminds me of the joke about the cop that pulls the guy over and he goes, uh, sir, your eyes are awfully red. Have you been drinking? And the guy says, gee, officer, your eyes are awfully glazed. Have you been eating donuts? <laughs> My friend Fiddler, he may or may not be here, but Gleesa, his wife's here, and uh, he gave me this one. This bear goes in a bar. And Nancy Pelosi's sitting at the far end, so he walks to the middle, and he goes, Man, I'm about to die of thirst. Give me a tall beer. The bartender says, Well, I'm really sorry, but we don't serve bears in this bar. And the bear goes, Look, I got money. You better give me a beer now, or I'm going to walk down there to the end of the bar and tear that lady apart and eat her. The bartender reiterated, I'm sorry, buddy, but the rule is no bears are to be served in this bar. 
We're on the bar. The bear lumbers to the end of the bar, shreds and eats Nancy Pelosi. He walks oh, back to the middle. He goes, give me a beer now. And the bartender said, I told you, no bears, and especially bears on drugs, are served in this bar. And the bear says, what are you talking about? I'm not on drugs. The bartender says, oh, yeah, what about the barbiturate? Uh, <laughs> 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 this guy goes oh, oh. <laughs> Am I taking too much time? Cause no, I know. go ahead. You're doing great. Go on. Go ahead. All right. This priest wanted to become a grand priest. So he went to the local grand priest to see what it would take to reach this goal. And the grand priest said it, he'd have to pass a really rigorous test. It was only given once a year, but it was due to be given the next week. And the priest asked what the test was like. Well, the grand priest said, well, it's very rigorous. I said, you all you all the people vying for this position line up naked. You have to tie a bell on your penis. And then one by one, three beautiful women will come in stripping down to what Mother Nature gave them. So... As long as your bell remains silent, you'll pass the test. So the next week he came in, there were 12 other priests vying to be grand priest. And uh, they were all ushered in a room, strip, told to strip down and tie the bells on. Well, he was standing in the middle of the line, six on either side of him. And this exotic mutus started up. The first come in, a gorgeous brunette, slipping around, tossing her clothes. He was sweating. He started glancing around him, looking how it's affecting the others, but... They seemed pretty unmoved, so out came an even lovelier woman, a blonde, tossing her lingerie right at them and undulating across the floor. He's Now he's in a dead sweat, about, about to lose control, and he glances about. They all still seem pretty collected looking. Oh, God, get a grip, he told himself. But then out came this voluptuous, ravishing redhead, taunting them with her body, stripping down to her lovely nakedness, and... He lost it. His bell rang so hard it dropped to the floor, bounced in front for all to see. He was totally embarrassed and devastated. As he bent over to retrieve his bell, ding a ling a ling a ling, 12 other bells went off. <laughs> Guy goes in for a job interview, and the interviewer says, uh, Hey, um, what would you say is your worst trait? And the guy goes, Well, I'd have to say it's my brutal honesty. The interviewer says, well, I don't think that's necessarily a bad trait. The guy says, I don't give a fuck what you think. <laughs> <laughs> this guy goes into Granny's whorehouse, and he says, Granny, uh, I want the wildest thing you got in the house. I don't care what it costs. She said, well, tonight, $300 paid in advance. Upstairs, turn left, first door on your right. So he gives her 300, goes upstairs, turns left, first door on the right, and he goes in. There's this really nice room there. It's beautiful, gorgeous, but there's nobody in there. There's a duck sitting on the bed. He looks in the closet. He looks behind the curtains. He goes in the bathroom. Nobody's there, just a duck. So he shrugs, and he, he mounts the duck. Well, he comes back the next week. He goes, Granny, that was pretty wild last week, but uh, don't you have something even more outrageous? And she said, well, it's going to cost you. It's going to be more like $500 paid in advance. He says, I'll take it. And she goes, all right, turn upstairs, turn right, first door on your left. Goes upstairs, turn right, first door on the left, and there's some guy outside looking at a peephole. The guy's going, oh, shit, oh, wow, oh, motherfucker, oh, my God, this is great. <coughs> Fifty women all naked, all rolling around. And he goes, well, can I look? I paid. The guy goes, well, sure, look in there. And he goes, oh, my God, you were so right. Oh, this is outrageous. And the other guy goes, you think this is great? Last week, some guy was trying to fuck a duck. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I don't think my, um, that's it for the night. I had this, my little, uh, my little windows woo! thing. Yay. Yay! My thank window. you so much. Bravo. Thank you. Fantastic. That was great. I Come on, we have some fun tonight. To the rear Hope here. everybody's laughing, enjoying themselves. Yeah. yeah. What's the difference between a jet engine and a flight attendant? Don't know. At the end of the flight, the jet stops whining. <laughs>